and welcome back to the channel. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that this is the day that the Most High has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. A uh, message came to my mind um, earlier. And the message was very simple. I mean, it's right there in the Word of the Most High. It's right there in the Bible. It says, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Okay, and then the question is asked, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? <clears throat> See, the problem is uh, we put so much concentration on this life, our physical life, uh, but there's not enough concentration on the afterlife. This life is very, very temporary. This is a temporary life we live, right? But there's more focus, more attention put on this temporary life. You know, the Bible also tells us that this life is just a vapor. Just a vapor, meaning it is here for a moment and then it vanishes away. Right? And so why is it that we put so much focus on this temporary existence that we have and not enough focus on eternity? <clears throat> I'm reminded of a poem that I wrote decades ago when I was just a teenager. And there was a question asked, you know, in the poem, which I, I need to get some of my poems out and I, I need to go ahead and uh, publicize those, right? But um, anyway, one of the questions was, um, if you drew your last breath, where would you spend eternity, right? Where would you spend eternity? Most people don't even think about where they're gonna spend eternity. They look around at this life and they, they see the trees and the sun, the, the moon and the stars and, you know, the, the changing of the seasons. You know, they're getting prepared for their day and, you know, the work at hand. You know, of course, the Most High is not telling us or expecting us not to, you know, look at these things and consider these things. He's not, he doesn't expect us to not plant a garden because of eternity, right? But when I say that um, a lot of people don't give any thought for this temper, I mean, in, for their eternal life, they give more thought to this temporary life. You know, that's where the question comes. That's where the question in the Bible um, scripture comes. What would a man give in exchange for his soul, right? What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? These are questions that are in the Bible. Hmm? And most people don't consider them. They don't consider them. Because the devil is very busy trying to paint a picture to you of the world. So that you can get yourself comfortable in this very, very temporary life. But what we need to be doing is getting ourselves ready for eternity. Now, there was a, a dream not a dream, I'm sorry, it wasn't a dream. There was an experience uh, that was shared with us not long ago. And um, it's the testimony of Brother Dominic. Uh, he was a Chicago gang member. And um, his testimony is so very deep. He talked about uh, what happened when the man that was following him pulled the trigger and shot him, right? point blank. He talked about how his body fell backwards, okay, in his spirit. When it left his body, um, he felt himself falling forward, though. He said that's where the supernatural of this experience began. Once he was shot, after seeing that flash of light from the gunshot, um, his body fell backwards, which is normal. You're being shot this way, so you're gonna fall backwards, right? But in the spirit, he was falling forward um, into hell. So we shared that uh, video with someone yesterday again, <clears throat> because we want people, first of all, if you haven't seen uh, Brother Dominic's testimony, it is um, um, on YouTube. Um, it is on a channel called Touching the Afterlife, uh, where this woman, she, she and her husband, they uh, share uh, supernatural experiences that people have. 
and many of these experiences are people who have crossed over and gone to hell of course there are other experiences too but brother dominic's is the one that really i've heard others i've seen others but he has really got into some great details of what it was like to be in sheol or hell okay and if if you weren't living right uh, that one is definitely one that would scare you straight and I hope that um, if you haven't seen it that you would go take a look at that testimony because this thing is real a lot of people again they focus on this temporary life but your life in eternity is not temporary eternity is forever time vanishes away <clears throat> in eternity there is no one minute five minutes uh, 10 days, 10 months, five years. There's none of that. Eternity is it, right? And so the devil have so many people concentrating on this very, very temporary life and not trying to make sure that their anchor holds and grips a solid rock, right? We have these human thoughts about how our lives should be. Um, these human thoughts about what we should be doing. Um, but we don't understand that there is a lot of deception out here in the world, right? And the Most High allows it. He allows the deception. As a matter of fact, he also sends it, right? And see, people don't want to hear this, but the Bible says, <clears throat> the Most High says, and I will send a strong delusion. He says he will send a strong delusion so that people can believe a lie right because they have not a love for the truth but pleasure in unrighteousness so the most i says i'm going to send a strong delusion now for some people that is hard to understand because they only want to think of him as a loving god right he says yes i am loving but there's another side of me i'm also an elohim or a god of wrath hmm? so don't get so stuck um in this temporary life to where you refuse to see the most high in his entirety where he says look i'm going to be the one to send the strong delusion in other words he's going to allow satan to deceive a lot of people because they don't have a love for the truth they don't have um, <clears throat> um a love for what's righteous but they have pleasure in unrighteousness so he said he will send it okay he will send the strong delusion and uh, those are those angels and spirits and demons that prowl the earth seeking whom they may devour. These devils, right? There are <clears throat> angels of punishment, okay? Angels of judgment. Uh, there are angels that are there to guide us towards the truth, right? But the Bible tells us that there are angels of punishment as well. And so when you are always being handed this picture of goodness, kindness, mercy, and grace, and you never want to tap into the wrath to understand that the Most High is not playing with any of us, when you only want to talk about the mercy, that's the devil essentially trying to blind you towards the actual truth. And the actual truth is that time is winding up. The Most High is not playing. He does expect us to occupy until he comes. But um, as Brother Dominic stated in his testimony, the Most High also expects us to handle our business, right? Make sure that your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. What does the Bible say also? It says that we are all to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, right? And of course, people don't want to talk about that. They don't want to think about it, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So as we get into this changing season, <clears throat> and we can hear the birds chirping, we can hear the gentle breeze. We can feel the warm sun on our faces. We see the buds starting to form on the trees. As we see these things, don't lose sight of reality. And the reality is, this is a temporary life, right? This is a temporary life. Very temporary. But the question remains, if you were to draw your last breath right now, where would you spend eternity? I like um, something that Brother Dominic said, and um, 
it mirrors a lot of things that we teach in our ministry. But five seconds from now is not promised. See, people make plans, right? They make plans. But the Bible even tells us, it says, don't say what you're going to do tomorrow, right? You have to say, if the Most High wills, I will do this or that, right? If the Most High wills, if he, if he is willing, if he allows me to, I will do this or that. Hmm? So, you know, back to the brother's testimony when he made the statement about, you know, you don't know five seconds from now because when he was shot, right? And the Most High was gracious enough to allow them to bring him back when he was in the hospital, right? But when he was shot, he was instantly in another realm. When his spirit left his body, he was instantly in another realm. This realm ceased to exist, right? Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's work out our own salvation in fear and trembling. It is what it is. Yes, the Most High is loving. This is why I'm able to sit here, right? I could have been dead in my sins. You could have died in your sins. So yes, he is loving. He's merciful. I'm sitting here, I'm talking to you because he is merciful, right? Tomorrow wasn't promised to any of us. This moment was not promised, but I'm grateful to be in this moment, able to share this word with you. I'm grateful to be in this moment. So I want you to uh, take a look at Brother Dominic's testimony. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. Um, it is definitely an eye-opener and so many testimonies similar to his. And don't listen to it and days from now you forget about it. If you have to, remind yourself every so often, not with just his testimony but others like it, that hell is a very real place. Eternity is real. This life is temporary. And so we have to ask ourselves, where am I going to spend eternity? Where is my relationship with the Most High? Okay? And don't trick yourself into thinking that you're all right because you, you feel like you're a do-gooder and blah, blah, blah. Make sure that your life lines up with what the Bible says, right? And I want to touch more on this topic because so many people are deceived. They are so deceived with their religion to where they have completely missed the mark on serving the Most High. So deceived, right? So anyway, I am done. I'm done with this video. I hope I've said something that will cause you to think something that will put you on the straight path the narrow path right get off that broad road uh, so even some religious folks don't even realize they are on a broad road get off of that road okay the bible tells us that the straight and narrow road only a few will find it that's frightening only a few will find it Pray that you are a part of that few. I'm done. Enjoy the rest of your day.